Welcome to our Autumn Harvest Sign project. This is a really fun little project. I've done some kind of like faux chalky effects um, using a stencil so it's really easy. You don't have to know how to you know, do fine lettering and measure it all out and all that kind of stuff. And it's also a dry brushing project so we've done um, a really quick technique to get all of the base coats and highlights. It's actually, I think I painted it, designed, painted, start to finish in about four hours. So it's not even a hard project. It is about 18 inches long and I love it as a, an autumn welcome sign. I hope you enjoy the project. Okay, I'm going to start my project with multi-purpose sealer. Any kind of sealer that goes with the line of paint that you're using is perfect. What I want to do though is I want to prevent, this is a very hard surface, it's an MDF surface, but if you don't seal it on both sides, then if you get, um, like say you've got it out by your front door, if you get some kind of extreme weather blowing in and stuff like that, um, you could end up with a little bit of warpage. So if you seal both sides, um, then you should be really safe. And I want to show you an example of something. This is an example of multi-purpose sealer that has dried on my palette. Um, I came in this morning and my station was all a mess and stuff like that. Notice how perfectly clear that is. Um, this is not going to affect the um, surface value and stuff like that, but you can see this is a pretty hard, flexible, I'm not even breaking it when I'm bending it. This is a barrier. So you want to make sure that you are using your barriers when, um, and then varnish on top of your project as well. Use your barriers because that protects your surfaces and your art from the elements. So I'm going to just take a big number one oval glaze and just nice long strokes and get it quickly sealed. And if you use thin um, product, then you won't um, end up with long drying times. Okay, so I've sanded with my um, light sanding disc to make it a little bit smooth, but then I'm going to roll on my top coat so that I get a little bit of pebbly feel, which is different than the sanded, uh, the unsanded um, sealer. So just to know that there is a little bit of a difference. The, when we're doing our dry brushing, it's gonna catch just the tips of the pebbly um, texture and that's going to help the dry brush technique. If you have a really slick surface, then it won't catch at all. All right, I've got my base coats done and they're in the instructions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some khaki tan and some bleach sand and I'm gonna load them both on a crescent brush and I'll dry it all off on my paper towel. And then I'm going to hit the high areas and create some depth, some raised areas that look like they're coming up front. And notice I'm starting with the most back thing that I have. So up here on my, on my sunflowers, I'll start with the leaves and then work to the middle. That just helps keep everything nice and tidy. Where things get the, the fattest or the roundest is where they're going to be the brightest. So I'll do that with khaki plus bleach sand. And we'll go ahead and bring that down the neck of the squash. And then we let it fade out to the edges. And then I'll go just, just bleach sand, dry it off on the paper towel. And then within the area that I've just done, I'll go for a brighter highlight. And that will help achieve that fade. Okay, and that gives it just a little bit of depth. And then what you can do is you can take your brush and you can use some rubbing alcohol to clean it off. I've got kind of a pile of these, so I'm just going to chuck it in my wash basin. But you, if you don't have a lot, use rubbing alcohol and then dry it on the paper towel. We're going to go into Evergreen with our number two Patty's favorite dry brush. And, okay, and we're going to create some squiggles up here and coming out the edges. That is evergreen. If it gets on the black, don't worry about it. You can just take your um, black base coat and mark it out. Okay, now I'll start getting a little bit bigger as we walk down. Come down the middle. Let's go 
squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Add more as you need it. Kind of get it placed at first, and then you can go back and give it a little bit more jazz. Like so, I think that some of these lines are a little bit light, so I'll go in a little bit more paint and increase the, the amount. And then that is going to be green on its edge, so I'll go ahead and make it green down its edge. This one is not. Okay, then you can go Hauser medium green. And with a dirty brush, pick some of that up. And I'll just go ahead and make that a little brighter in the brighter areas. Okay, we're going to take our honey brown and make a little wash, which means we're going to put like 80% water and blot on our paper towel. And we're just going to wash over the whole little squash. Wash the squash. Try to keep that off your black or it's going to look real chalky and dirty. And then I'll give it just a little bit of warmth. And then I think we'll just go in with the evergreen in a wash as well. And we'll just create that whole base as a green base. Just put around in it. Okay, we'll go into our bleach sand and we'll make a nice strong highlight. Oops, hi, that's a really strong highlight. Let it have just some machine. And then that gives the impression that it is indeed something shiny and hard. I think in order to keep the um, squash looking like it's behind things, I'm going to go into evergreen and I'm going to float and sink this in so that there's no light halo. a little bit deeper look. Maybe we'll have just a little bit more up here. Alright, to load our brush, what we're, we're going to do is we're going to move through the colors um, from the darkest to the lightest, and they call that like a sequential um, system. Okay, and we're going to load our brush until it gets kind of juicy on top, and we're using Patty's favorite dry brush which is an oval glaze that um, is cut and shaved this way and cut round this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to always use a flat paper towel and we're going to flick on our paper towel one time so that we don't have a really strong set down. Okay, And we're going to just use light pressure with our brush on its tippy toes and we're going to make the sections highlighted. We're going to use shape following strokes if you get a little high, a little low, then uh, just correct. But what's neat about this is it will slowly come up on you. So we're going to leave space between the sections because that's going to be our shadow color. So as I move to the other side of the sections of pumpkins, 
I'm changing my direction. Brushing my my um, brush off on the paper towel. A lot of times I'll use just black, and I wanted to see if I could get this to be a little bit more of an orange pumpkin this time. So I made it base coated with the russet. And so that color will go almost all the way down. These longer boards are a little bit hard to keep on camera, so hopefully I can do that for you. So make sure you're leaving that space in between the colors. Otherwise, see how that's already looking like a shadowed pumpkin? And what's interesting is I would think that I would never have the question put to me, was this oil painted when I'm done dry brushing, which is the least amount of painting you could possibly do and there's no blending and stuff. But my dry brush projects are always the ones that people ask me if they're oil paints. So not quite sure what, why that is, but um, they're always the brightest. Um, the color ends up being just really superb. And I always feel a little bit like a, a cheater. And I say, no, 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 we just dry brushed. Okay, so isn't that a nice start? You've already got like lots of it going. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat with um, the burnt orange because I think that I need it in some places. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my highlight, so I'm not going to go all the way out to that edge. I'm going to sneak in a little bit and make that a little bit more solid in the middle. Okay, and that gives it a little bit more weight. Do the same thing over here. Oops. Make sure you've got a good angle for your hand, otherwise you will be sad. Um, it will it'll make like weird angles and stuff. Make sure when you get to the outer edge that you um, have it pretty much base coated out there. So make sure you've got a little bit of extra paint on the edge of your brush or turn it on an angle that finishes the line of the pumpkin. Okay, we'll repeat over here as well. The dry brushing technique is actually an old master's technique. It is um, way back in you know, Michelangelo and all those dudes. Okay, now this is where it gets kind of cool. Dirty brush, I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to go into my Canyon Orange and I'm going to load it the same way. Now what this is going to do is it's going to change the color on my brush because it's dirty brush. So it's not going to quite be, <coughs> pardon me, um, Canyon Orange and it's not going to quite be burnt orange. You want to make sure that you're dry, um, otherwise the paint will stick where you don't want it to. Okay, so we'll get this. And that's going to go within the middle. You're going to build a, a highlight gradually. So you're not going to put it everywhere. Notice that it takes me a lot less time to do this highlight. Okay. And as you get over to the edges, you won't do as much of that either. So this is mostly front and center and in the middle where the highlights are. Just a touch back there. Okay. So now I am definitely still wet because I can see it shiny, so I'll have to get the blow dryer out. Okay, so next we'll go into Dirty Brush into Marigold, and that definitely will pick up a little bit of the orange color. And then that's going to be just nice and up front. And you really want to make sure you have your technique down so that you can get just a really nice highlight area. Reload. And highlight area. So see how that's picking up the light at the top.
this a little bit in the back. Okay, and then I'm going to come forward and just repeat just a little bit more. Okay, that just really starts taking on some shape and form. Ooh, hi. Now I'll flip my brush over. I'm starting to get a little toe on my brush, so it's kind of flippy and weird. I'll flip my brush over. It's forced all this orange paint out of my brush. And I'll load the other side and flick on the paper towel. And then that will give me a nice, lovely dry brush technique. Then we're going to go into, I'm going to wipe my brush out a little bit. I'm going to go into bleach sand in this sequence. And hopefully I'm not wet still. And we'll go ahead and yeah, dry off a little bit more. And yeah, just get in, think I'm catching. So don't do it while your paint is wet, and then I do it while my paint is wet. <laughs> Gotta be the fastest way to paint a pumpkin ever. Oops. Don't get it in that dark area either, because that will make it look very strange and chalky and stuff. Okay, and then I can go into the bleach sand. Okay, I can go into the bleach sand and I can give it just a little bit of a I'm a shiny thing line. And that's just going to be a really strong line. And usually we reserve those for things that are got a hard surface and then they're shiny. Alright, so we're going to use russet. We've got them based with um, soft black. I'm going to have low russet. And doing my pattern. Okay, so they're kind of shape following this direction. So I'll just go ahead. I won't get it all the way next to my um, pumpkin because that'll leave a little shadow area. Rub a little bit on the back just to indicate that there's something back there. the edge and then as you're going along change your shape so that it goes the other direction we'll dry out our brush and then we'll go into heritage brick It's going to be less to the edges, more to the highlight area. And you should start being able to see these just a little bit better. All right, then we're going to wash with cherry. So that'll just be a glaze, basically. A wash and a glaze are about the same thing. wash over the shading area and the highlight area. Oops, and not on the black. And while we've got this heritage red color out, let's go ahead and give a little bit of glazing on the shadow area with a little bit of the red. Try to stay out of your highlight. And that just warms everything up quite a bit. And if you think you need some more, go down at the base with a little bit more. Okay, I'll get those dry. Alright, we're going to highlight with some butterscotch. 
and I'm a little afraid of this color. Okay, then we'll go into a touch of bleach sand with it. And once again, we'll have our little shiny something. And so we don't want our eye too far out here, so if that gets too bright, just block down a little bit. Okay, we're going to work on our sunflowers. On our sunflowers, we're going to go and make the front ones. So we're going to line. I'm using, I'm dry brushing with my round. And I'm going to, um, what am I going to do? Sorry. Okay, so we want to make the ones that are in front be the ones that are in front. So you need to make sure that you give them the line over the top. I'm looking, and this one that I just did is not in front, so this one. You might need to refresh your paint on the tip of your brush when you do it. But make sure that goes in front of these two guys. Refresh your paint. Make sure that the tips of these are nice and marigoldy. Okay, and we'll repeat all the way around. Okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to strengthen just the tips of my marigolds so that they get a nice strong color right there. I wonder what would happen if I put a little bleach sand in that. Lighten them up just a little. Nah, I'm not seeing much. We'll see what we can add. Be careful, it's really easy to knock over your paints when they're sitting in front of you. Anyway, I'll just repeat on all of the tips. Okay, and I'm wanting to kiss just a little bit of the marigold up on my pumpkin. I'm going to yellow-orange yellow it up a little bit. I've got a little bit too red-orange. Just out of your um, shade areas. Get some sunshine going on those pumpkins. And then that's going to bring our yellow up in here. And I think I'll go ahead and let's try just a little bit of yellow on our squash as well. And that gives it just a little bit more brightness. Maybe our apple can even have just a little bit of yellow over by the highlight. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Okay, I have a new angle shader, and notice the length of the bristles on the angle shader. That is going to do a really tremendous job for swooping in and rounding out um, floats. So I'm able to walk floats out really easily, and that is just going to make this job super simple. So what you're going to do is you're going to round out Let's see, bring it up the edge. Oops, hi. Not too far up the edge. Okay, and that's going to make things look um, in front of and behind. Okay, with that same angle brush, we're going to go ahead and just, just kind of highlight the tip. Doesn't have to be everywhere. And I'm blotting to prevent that just from having too much of a... And I don't know that we want them too white, so be real careful not to get too unbalanced. I like a little bit of something extra going on there. Okay, we're going to stipple our centers with a round, with a dome brush, and burnt umber. And we're going to 
going to go over the edges of where the petals come in. I like the stipply texture. And then you got to kind of fill it in um, where it comes up next to the petals. Okay, and on one side of our brush, I'm just going to go into Lamp Black and I'll stipple a uh, shadow. Let's see, we'll go ahead and make it be on. I can't see over the glare. On one side. Same thing on this side. And then we'll wipe that brush out. And we'll go into just a touch of the um, marigold. And we'll give it a little bit of a highlight. bright, seed-like looking effects. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put on some of my letters and I'm going to go ahead and base these two um, leaves. I'll base the leaves with honey. It is more fun to paint these leaves with a little stencil than it is, like stencils make these kinds of leaves a blast to do. So you just go ahead and get a coat of honey brown on there. Because then you can glaze them and do all kinds of neat things with them. And I'll go ahead and repeat that. You always want to wipe off your brush onto a paper towel um, to prevent bleeding under. And you'll notice that I didn't just then and I was sitting there going, oh, I hope that I don't screw this up. But always, 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 it's like the rule. Okay, so then we're going to take a brush. I'm going to take a dome brush that's been kind of worn down so it's nice and stiff. I'm going to use slate gray. Um, you can use chalk and chalk pencil. That's perfectly fine, but um, I'm going to do an effect of chalk. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use slate gray to lightly scumble. So I'm rubbing it all off on my paper towel. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us the appearance of chalking. You don't want it base coated, you definitely want that kind of transparent see-through look. Take a peek at it. And that's looking very darn chalky to me. And I'll repeat for these sets of letters. Alright, then we're going to pick up just a little bit of white with our dirty brush and we're going to put just a little bit of white hints. Not everywhere, just a little bit. Take a peek. I could use a little bit more. I think the gray is neutralizing the, um, the white in my brush. Okay, take a peek. Okay, it's a little bit chalkier looking. Okay. 
and now it's looking a little bit more like we're doing something here. Sometimes it gets super frustrating to not get all the way done and I'm like, ah, I don't know where I'm going. Okay, so then this little guy is going to go down here. And I should have finished my leaves while I had that on there. And then this little guy is going to go right up here. Okay, now i got to figure out colors. Okay, I'm going to attempt to do these letters. Um, I don't know what I'm doing yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do these outside lines in the chalk color. And I've got them just on a little cutout banner. chalky effect. Okay, and now I'm going to go into that same brush. I'm going to go into Desert Turquoise. Then I'll just stencil or base coat the letters. Okay, so I was using my Patty Spirit dry brush for these leaves and I really don't like how that turned out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Let's go back and use shape following strokes. I like this control that I'm getting with the round. This is that new um, deco art round. And so it's letting me kind of get the streaks in exactly where I want them. And whoops, I put my hand right through the paint. So I can get a point and I can get my streaks. Then I'll jump up to my Hauser light green and I'll do the, basically the same thing but just not everywhere and not as far down. Okay, and that just pops them up just a little bit. Okay, and while we're talking about the green, let's go ahead and highlight the stem if I can get a good angle on it. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll come up from the bottom. We'll get three little places coming up. Just dry brushing with the tip. I'm going to bring this one around. So these guys are going to chase that way. And we'll get a little twisted stump going on. Twisted stem. Okay, I'm going to bring that out this way. this way. All right, we're going to take a little bit of weathered wood. And we won't put it where our flowers are. And we'll just work it in nice and thin onto the background. Let it dry. Make sure it stays spread out. Go back and work it if it starts balling up on you. You'll know what I mean when you see it. Alright, we're going to get a little bit of our um, Indian turquoise and a crescent brush and we will just go across the top and I rubbed off too much. Across the top Bring it down to about halfway. And get a little highlight going. And then we'll get a little bit of white, just a teeny bit. And we'll do that across the very top. A little bit more. And 
and then we'll go into our navy blue uh, yeah navy blue and we'll just go ahead and scumble that just at the bottom just anchor everything down gives us just a little bit of details. Okay, I'm going to use this ultra fine stylus and I'm going to dot my letters. At the top I'm going to use white and then as I go down the letters I will switch to desert turquoise or Indian turquoise, sorry. We'll repeat those on all the letters. All right, and then I'm going to go in and just in shape following strokes, I don't want to undo what I've done here, so I'll be careful, and then I'll just go back and patch it. Um, I'm using burnt number and russet, and I'm going to crackle. A lot of orange. I'm going to have to tone this puppy down. And I'll do the same to the top. Okay, I'm going to take my same liner and I'm going to use just the very tip of it. And I'm going to loosely line to indicate drop shadow. I kind of want it a little bit away from the edge. I'm doing a very nice job of hitting my edge and I'm not happy with myself. A little bit of water. And that's just going to give it a little bit more jazz. I want some leaves for the tops of my um, pumpkin, but I don't have holes drilled in them. So I'm going to use this little two-pointed, um, two-sided drill. I'm not super happy about doing power tools. And you just drill the hole. I'm on a paper towel to help kind of cushion the surface so that I don't um, drill through. But I just did this one, and look at how snazzy that looks. It looks just like I had a a little drill so very handy to have in your toolkit for when you absolutely need some holes in your leaves okay so we've got our color up here I'm going to go into Canyon Orange just dry brushing just like I've done and I'm going to use a big brush and we're going to give it a little bit more shazow I don't like that it's super plain So I'm just dry brushing over the top of it. And just leading away. I'm also going to kind of sand it and distress it just a little bit. And we'll repeat. I have got stuff everywhere. Repeat on the bottom. give us just a little bit of interest down here. Okay, then we're going to move up and we're going to go into Canyon Orange. And that's going to be just a little bit lighter still. And then I give us just a little bit more texture. It's 
same thing at the top. Long strokes if you can do it. When you start running out of paint, make sure you grab more, otherwise it'll get real splotchy looking. getting a little bit more interesting. I go into butterscotch, dirty brush, raw. I've got a big mess. Okay, and that's going to just streak that down, bring a little yellow down there, tone everybody down just a little bit. And I'll repeat up top. Okay, we're going to go into our sticky mesh, and I am in butterscotch. And we'll just give us a few more textury moments. A little homespun kind of feel. I think that's what that gives that. Ooh, I've got some red mixed in my brush. I've got my leaves up there. Repeat at the top. starting to get just a little bit more rustic looking. I like that a little bit better. Okay, and I'm looking for balances of color now. So now I think what we'll do is we'll go into our um, banding stencil. I'll get rid of my banners. And now what we're going to look for is what color do I want to band with? I think it's got to be the teal color, so I think we're going to do the desert turquoise. So I'm going to get that straight on over there. And the very first thing I'll do is I'll go into my flat brush and I will base coat around these um, sunflowers that are sticking out there because I don't want them to be that color. And then I'll stencil the rest. I'll repeat. And there we go. Perfect, perfect band. Love me some banding stencils. Okay, we'll come on the other side. Down, same thing. I'll get close to it. These are universal um, for any straight edge. You can use them and they come in different sizes. We've got as thin as we can go with lasers and um, as thick as makes sense. Okay. Repeat. And then we've got decorations on them as well. And now I'll repeat at the top. All right, while I'm at it, I'm gonna go up here with some Hauser Medium Green and just highlight the stem. I'll pick up a little Hauser Light. Get it nice and highlighted and then use our sticky mesh. Give ourselves some texture. And we'll do the same thing to our leaves. Uh, we'll go into Hazard Medium first, and we'll just kind of dry rub over here on the edge of the leaf. Maybe just to one side. Do the same thing with the little guys, just so that there's some difference in them. We don't want them to be very flat and the same. Pick up Hazard Light. It just slightly over to the edge, not so far. And then we'll use our sticky mesh, give ourselves a little bit of texture. Oops. And then do the back sides. Alright, we're going to use Indian turquoise 
to do our checks. So I've got that lined up. What I love about this is you don't have to do any measuring. It's awesome. And ta-da! Make sure you don't have any across the back side and line up two of them and line it to your edges and continue. Always blot on your paper towel. Here we go. Nice even checks. Alright, we're going to find some russet on our palette and finish these little leaves out. So I'm going to do russet off to one side. I'm just going to do these a little bit structured. Um, if they were a focal point, I would be like making them all kinds of crazy. I think we can do them a little bit structured and it'll be fine. So just to either side that faces the edge, we'll do them dark with russet. And then I will flip my paper towel over, wipe out the paint, and go find some marigold. Now that's going to neutralize, so I'll go load it one more time. And we'll highlight off to one side and maybe one more time oh hi when you can't hold your paper towel it's harder to blot off so be careful and I think these leaves need to be not white I'm trying to find some honey in my palette just go ahead and make these be a little bit of something This little stem here in the middle needs to get to be green. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, I am so cheating with my stencil. I am going to... I taped off my apple, and I'm going to go ahead and just... I like the tips of this leaf using the tip of the leaf that I just stenciled with just to give it a little bit of shazow and now I've got that highlighted and I didn't have to work real hard yay okay and then I'll have to dry that off and flip it over to do the other one and kind of just line it up for whatever shape that is that I've got tape it off tips. Just one more time. There we go. And it looks like I've got one more. Go ahead and just take that off. I'm going to shade with a little bit of russet plus a little bit of soft black. That's just going to make a nice, ooh, hi, with a little bit of teal on your brush. No panicking. Okay, let's see if we can still have it on there. That'll just sink everybody together. do the top as well. 